Today we're going to be going over this small question four from the January 2012 paper one for for the pure math. Now the reason I wanted to go over this question because it may seem like a trick question at first, but you may have to ignore your instincts if your instincts are what I think they are, because I know that for me especially when I saw this one plus some x term. My first instinct was that we may have to use the infinite binomial series expansion or that the infinite binomial series expansion was, for example, the correct solution to this, which in actual fact, you can use it. It, it remains valid for this expression, although only when x over root 3 is less than 1. But regardless, I'm fairly certain that it works for this expression, but anyway, I wanted to go over the easier method of doing this, because in actual fact the harder method would simply be too much of a headache. And so we have the binomial expansion here, our first term is going to be a 1, and our second term is the x over root 3, so, and we have to find the coefficient of x to the power of 7. So when this has been selected out of the bracket seven times, and when this has been selected out of the bracket three times, and by selected out of the brackets, I mean like if you lined up 10 of these expressions side by side, which is how you would represent it being multiplied by itself 10 times, the binomial coefficient is simply the number of ways in which it could choose, for example, when you're multiplying the terms together, you end up multiplying every possible combination of the two terms from each of the brackets. So there's a certain number of ways or a certain number of combinations where you're picking the first one from seven brackets or in this case, the first one from three brackets and the second one from seven brackets. And the number of ways that is, is the same number of ways as if you try to pick seven brackets, which you're going to take x over root three from, and then three brackets, which you're going to take the one from. And of course, you may see this represented in notation as uh, 10 choose 7. And this is the case because you have 10 brackets and you're choosing 7 of them from which to take the x over root 3 in order to get our x to the power of 7. And by 10 choose 7, what this really represents is 10 factorial, which is divided by 7 factorial multiplied by 3 factorial. And I might look into this choosing formula in another video, but for now, what you need to know is that for any binomial coefficient or n choose r, if you have an n and an r as your, where r is the number of things you're choosing out of n, this will be equal to n factorial over r factorial and minus r factorial. And of course, you may be able to notice that n choose r is equal to n choose n minus r. If you look at the way the formulas are down here. And this is simply because choosing, for example, 7, choosing 7 out of 10 is the same as choosing 3 out of 10 to exclude from your choice, leaving you with 7, and so on. Like, if you chose r number of things, then choosing n minus r number of things would be the same as choosing r number of things to exclude from your choice. That's why this is the same. So, in fact, 10 choose 7 would also be equal to 
10 choose 3. Anyway, this is sort of tangential to the actual question. So if we're looking at the bracket where x over root 3 has been chosen seven times to be multiplied, meaning that we have x over root 3 to the power of 7, and this is multiplied by, well, 1 has been chosen three times out of the 10 brackets, so times 1 to the power of 3. And then, of course, the number of ways you could choose x over root 3 seven times and 1 three times is going to be um, 10 choose 7, or 10 choose 3. So if we're looking for the x to the power of 7 coefficient, we can move this x to the power of 7 outside. So you'd get like x to the power of 7 multiplied by 1 over root 3 to the 7 times, well, 1 to the power of 3 is just 1, so we can ignore it, times 10 choose, not a fraction, times 10 choose 7. So this would be equal to x to the power of 7 multiplied by, well, 1 over root 3 to the power of 7 will be 1 over 1 to the power of 7 over root 3 to the power of 7, or 3 to the power of 3 and a half. So that would be 3 cubed multiplied by root 3 would be on the denominator. So 27, which is 3 cubed, times root 3, which is 3 to the power of 1 half and it's 1 over this, multiplied by 10 choose 7, which if we look at the formula back up here, it would be, uh, since the factorial is the number, when you count down from 10 to 1 and you multiply all the numbers in between, so like 10 factorial is 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times da 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 times 2 times 1, since it's divided by a 7 factorial, we can basically ignore this, and just say that this is 10 times 9 times 8, and then we stop because the rest of the terms has been cancelled out by the 7 factorial, divided by 3 times 2 times 1, which is 3 factorial. And then, of course, you've got, you can cancel out the 3 and the 9 to get 3, you cancel out the 8 and 2 to get 4, and you get 10 times 3 times 4, which would be um, 120, which is equal to 10 to 7. So, 1 over 27 root 3 times 120. And then, of course, you've got a third on the bottom of this fraction here. So you rationalize it by multiplying by root 3 over 3 to get um, 1 over 81, basically. And then root 3 will be on the top. So you have root 3 divided by 81 multiplied by 120. Of course, 120 is divisible by 3, so the 120 and the A1 cancel out to get x to the 7 times root 3 over 27 multiplied by 40. Or the coefficient that you're looking for, because you're, asking, you're looking for the coefficient of the term, not the actual term. So you'd give the answer as um, 40 root 3 over 27, which is the number that they are looking for. And this time I did check with the mark scheme in advance. This is the correct answer if you came to the video for this purpose. But hopefully I've been able to explain and clarify what the manual expansion represents and why we have the n choose r. And thanks for watching.